Preservation Thursday. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Preservation Thursday. We are here. Just got off the radio a little bit ago. Uh, uh, be sure to catch the uh, podcast coming up later on today from AM News, where we talk strawberries. That's right. It is springtime. Strawberries are in the air. Uh, I just got 2,000 of them in yesterday. Four bucks a dozen if you're in the Reno Sparks area. Hey, it is Preservation Thursday. A couple issues. Uh, uh, Some that popped up this morning, I guess, and I need to address it. Uh, uh, Somebody put a thread in. I'm not going to call anybody's name out. Uh, We're going to keep them private. Uh, I'm trying to get the information uh, uh, from, from these folks so we can put the company on Front Street. Backfeeding electricity via a generator into a house via the dryer vent or a stove plug. It's illegal. That's number one. Number two, OSHA said it's hazardous. Can't do it. Don't do it. If you are a vendor of boots on the ground, your labor, do not do this. Send me the work order. I will sanitize it. So your name, the property address, etc. All that is out of it. All I need, I need the work order with a date on it. HUD said no to this procedure and this service over a year ago, ladies and gentlemen. OSHA has declared it an unsafe, hazardous service to perform. Many states across the country say, no, it's illegal. It's a violation of the building, uh, uh, the, your contractors, uh, uh, what, what is it? Uh, the contractor's board says no. Uh, your electrical companies say no. Um, just all kinds, house inspection, everything to do. No, you cannot do it. It's illegal. Not only that, it is dangerous. It is highly dangerous. You can blow the house up. If something goes wrong, it could backfeed into a power pole and boom. I mean, it all sounds crazy. It all sounds science fiction. It happens. There's a picture right now floating around LinkedIn of a power box that's fried because somebody backfed into it. And I'm going to guarantee you this right now. I will guarantee if you blow a house up, you're screwed because your insurance is not going to cover that. Uh, uh, now, professional electricians come out and do it. They work with the power company to do this, but professional electric electrical companies, licensed electrical companies come out, they will do it, and they bill $500. $500. I'm going to say that again. $500 is what that is that's what they charge for that and that's why they push this on unsuspecting members of labor in the property preservation industry and ladies and gentlemen as i said it is highly illegal do not do it not only that you're taking a chance of blowing yourself up you want to go home and hug that kid tonight right don't do it don't do it hey before I get into talking about IFAST. The interview will be up on the website. That's it, AllidayLLC.com, AllidayLLC.com. I want to address something that happens. It happens in business all the time. Uh, uh, Somebody called me yesterday uh, very upset about a mistake they made. It wasn't, it was a typo, but it cost some money. Uh, uh, and, And they panicked and they freaked out. And my and this is my recommendation, Lee. Look, you talk to everybody involved. You tell them, hey, look, this is a typo. Anybody on the other end, approving bids, knows how much this stuff costs. They know how much everything costs. They have all these charts and formulas and all kinds of crap that they come up with to to get numbers to where they want them. Not so you can profit, but where they want them. So if a job comes in, it should be around 10, 12,000 bucks and, and a typo brings it in at a thousand. They know they're taking advantage. Autonomy is a very important thing in business. When you're in business, if you screw up, 
don't be ashamed to say, hey, I'm sorry, man. Uh, how do we make this right? That is how you deal with it. And I'm going to tell you, one of the most successful business, successful companies when it comes to the subject of autonomy, when they first got going, was Domino's Pizza. Not big on their pizza, but Domino's Pizza. Remember, if they weren't there in 30 minutes, you got the pizza free. Instant autonomy. Hey, we screwed up. I'm sorry. Here's your pizza. They could afford to do that. I know how much pizza costs to put out. I mean, I used to put a, a, a little 10-inch pizza out in a restaurant I worked in for 10 bucks. It cost me 73 cents to make that pizza. That was labor, power, dough, ingredients, everything. 73 cents to make the pizza. And we were we, we were getting 10 bucks for it. So there's a huge... If you're in the restaurant business, you want to do a business, here's a little business one-on-one tip. Pizza has the largest margins in the food industry. It can be very lucrative if you do it right and you set it up right, as did Domino's, the guy who uh, I believe he owned the Detroit Tigers at the time. Uh, uh, he, he set that up and that was his policy. But that showed instant autonomy for a mistake. And if you're in business, ladies and gentlemen, which... Right now, I'm talking to people that are in business. Uh, uh, it, it's very important to understand autonomy and how you make something right if something goes wrong. It, it, there is no shame. There is no shame. And you will find as you move along throughout life and in the world that you will earn and garnish more respect by being big enough to say, hey, I screwed up. I'm sorry. How do we make this right. Something the Democratic Party doesn't know how to do, but autonomy is something that you need to understand. And if you're in business, you need to be, you need to be able to do it that fast. You have to do it. You, uh, maybe you have policies, refund. Now think about something for a minute. A refund policy is showing company autonomy. That it, uh, that is one of the biggest forms of autonomy in business is a refund policy. If you're not satisfied, hey, I, I don't want unhappy people uh, with Alliday LLC. Just don't want them. You know, you can't have them. If you're going to be successful and you want to be here tomorrow, you have to be able to show autonomy. So, and, and that works two ways, ladies and gentlemen, not just for me doing the screw up, but the person on the other end that is affected by the screw up, they have to be big enough to say, okay, hey, look, you're right. That's cool. We'll, we'll figure it out. They also have to be able to work with you. And if you have a, if you have a client or a customer that is unwilling to work with you, you might want to reevaluate that relationship because mistakes happen. We're human beings. I, I, I think if I'm not mistaken, history tells us there was only one perfect person that ever walked the planet. Think about that for just a minute, because they put them on a cross. That's what history says. So uh, uh, when, when you start getting into business, understand mistakes are going to happen. You have to be able to, to rectify a mistake immediately. There, there's always a remedy. And, and the first step in all remedies to mistakes, hey, I screwed up. I'm sorry. How do we make it right? And I tell you right now, you do that with a customer that does that, that you have that happens with. You do that with a customer. That customer is going to go say, hey, you know what? They stubbed their toe, but God, they fixed it right now. They fixed it on the spot. That's going to get you two or three more customers. And that customer service and the, the relationship between you and your customers, it's critical to be big enough to say, we screwed up. We're sorry. How do we fix it, folks? Come on. How, how do I fix this? How do I make this right for you? And a lot of times you'll find out it might be a little more inexpensive than you think when you ask them, how do I make this right with you? How do we fix this? Not very hard. Not very hard. Let's talk about some iFast. Let's talk about iFast. I am excited. I am jazzed. This, it, this is big, folks. This is huge. The interview, as I said, I interviewed... I'm, I'm going to pull some stuff up here so we can talk for just a minute here. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the board of directors. 
Tony Newman is the chairman. Joel Iris from Hawkeye Field Services is uh, 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 the co-chair. Jerry Hahn, somebody I know uh, uh, very well. He was a client of Alliday LLCs years ago. He, he contacted us. We did an a employee a, a company manual, a policy manual for him. Shameless self-promotion plug here. You need help with manuals, employee manuals, company manuals, policy manuals. Give me a call. We can help. We can help. It's on the website there. Uh, uh, Jerry Hahn, Precision Property Management. He is the membership chairman. Um, and, and now Jerry Hahn in Pennsylvania went all the way to Florida for the IFAST, or, or not IFAST, excuse me, for FAST, the Florida Association of Service Technicians down there hosted by Brett Douglas and Team Ironclad, your property preservation go-to guy, landscape maintenance go-to guy in that D-Land, Florida area, ladies and gentlemen. Let me see, Jeff Marquis, I've known, uh, I've been knowing Jeff for quite some time, Paramount Asset Management's PAM. Uh, as uh, many of you know, something came up. Uh, uh, with Jeff a while back. I wrote an article uh, uh, about it uh, based on everything that was going on. I've never heard back from the guy, so I have to... Uh, uh, I, I told the guy, if this doesn't get resolved, you let me know. So tip your hat at Jeff Marquis. Whatever conflict there was between him and, and uh, the other people they were working with, it, it got resolved. So Jeff will step up and resolve an issue. Like I said, autonomy uh, uh, whatever it is, uh, I deal with it. That's Jeff Marquis and somebody, uh, uh, the, the treasurer, Kelly Brown, Kelly Brown, also a member boots on the ground labor, if you will, uh, was involved in, in he, uh, the quiet Tam issues with five brothers, or as we fondly refer to them in the industry as the siblings, yeah. Uh, uh, but here's what I'm excited about. I believe one, two, three of the five people I just mentioned, members of NAMFS. That tells me right there, ladies and gentlemen, NAMFS has serious problems. These members of NAMFS see those problems and they're working towards a solution. And the solution is to bring everybody to the table. No ifs, ands, or buts. Everybody's got to come to the table. Back in 2010, I was asking, why doesn't labor have a seat at the table? Why, why, why? Eric Miller, and I, I, I don't want to pick on Mr. Miller. I don't want to pick on NAMFS. I want to try to, to move in a more positive direction for the industry. I think we all know in the last in the last seven years, there has been so much negativity on property preservation. It is rebosiating and it all falls on the shoulders of Mr. Miller. And, and, and I'm, like I said, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm calling a spade a spade here. Back in 2010, the Bucks X had a case that went belly up and it's directly affecting the membership of NAMFS today because FAS, Field Asset Services, now Assurance Field Asset Services, just lost the same lawsuit. MCS is next on the chopping block. And I'm telling you right now, there are attorneys out there just slobbering on themselves to go get Safeguard and some of these other companies that are seriously beating uh, uh, members up. Now, I spoke, last week I spoke with a, a, a person at Fannie Mae, and Fannie, this person says, oh, no, 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 we're not government controlled. We're privately held, government-backed. That's kind of a play on words when they're dictating to you a product to buy. The government can't do that. Make no mistake about this. The government owns Fannie Mae right now because of what the prior administration did. There is some serious, serious issues going on with Fannie Mae and, and Freddie Mac because all the money's been taken from those companies to do uh, the the... The belief is the former administration shuttled money somewhere else to fund shadow government and all that. I don't know about all that conspiracy type stuff. Uh, it looks like some of that stuff might, there's a pretty good chance it's true. Money was funneled off Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. That said, that said, 
the difference that I see going on with International Association of Field Service Technicians and NAMFS is the members that I have seen so far are realtors, property managers, uh, or property management type companies, uh, maintenance, property maintenance people, which if you think about it, folks, if you're not really property preservation, you're a property maintenance. You go maintain properties and preserve the integrity of the property so they can resell the property. That's kind of the function in property preservation. Also, the clients. And that's very important. Man or management, as we call it. Uh, uh, you want all the elements of an industry at the table. You want them all at the table at the same time. And you want them all to have a kind of a cohesion so things are smooth. I don't believe anybody in the industry, well, I don't know, maybe Klein and the people down at Cyprus that are trying to scam labor right now with uh, a secure view and Invisiboard as if it's some new product, newfangled uh, uh, technology that they have. It's a, it's a crock of crap. I'll tell you that right now. 